Hey everybody, welcome back to another product review. This time around, I'm taking a look at Goldmine's Essential Guide to Record Collecting by Dave Thompson from 2017. So full disclosure, Goldmine sent me this free of charge for me to review, but remember that my opinions are my own. Now, for those of you who don't know, Goldmine has been around since 1974, and it started out as a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to music collecting. That At that time, it was records and tapes, maybe eight tracks. And when I was coming up in the hobby, their thick record collecting guides were essential to figuring out prices on records. Now, right off the bat, for you longtime collectors, you might be thinking, eh, I'm gonna pass on this. I, I know pretty much all there is to know about record collecting, and honestly, I'm in the same boat. But I read it anyway, and I was surprised that I learned a few things, especially at the birth of record collecting. It's broken up almost chronologically how music sort of evolved. So chapter one is Edison versus Berliner, another format war. And this is where I'm talking about, I actually learned quite a few things because Edison came out with the, uh, the, the cylinder, right? But I think it was Berliner thought, well, why don't we put it on a flat disc? It makes more sense. And so Edison, he created his own system called the Edison record. Record, and it actually plays at 80 RPMs and you can only play it on a special Edison turntable. And what's crazy, they're, they're really thick. They're about a quarter of an inch thick. I've seen them out in the wild every once in a while. There's nothing too collectible on there. They're kind of rare, but they're not very valuable. Also spread out through all the chapters, they have the rare stuff and ballpark figure of how much something's worth. Bear in mind these prices that they give, 30,000, 15,000, 12,000, that's for a copy in near mint condition. He does a good job of explaining the condition and actually we should get into that real quick. Soon as we leave this early, uh, chapter we get into the birth of vinyl and then we get into the first 45s which is nice it kind of shows you that there were some lingering formats all at the same time you had a 45 you had a 78 you had 10 inch lps and where is it ah yes grading vinyl so this is chapter three this is such an important thing especially when you're out there being able to um you know visually look at a record, understand like prices and that sort of thing is, is very, very helpful. But what I've learned over the years is that it takes a long time. You have to constantly test yourself, pick up a record, look at it, you know, make that judgment. Is this near mint? Is this a uh, very good plus? Is this very good? That sort of thing. Play test the record too, uh, because visually grading vinyl won't lend you all of the answers that you need for in terms of the playing condition. And that's interesting too, that there's two types of grades for a record. The, the vinyl itself could be near mint, but the, the, the cover is all torn up. And so it's like a good, a good plus. Also in here, he talks, he does a great breakdown on why do we use near mint? Well, it, gold mine and I, I personally too operate under the theory that there is no such thing as a mint record. Something could be sealed in the shrink wrap still it may not be in mint condition because who knows if that's the right record in there, if it has an error from the pressing plant, if the labels misaligned, like there's so many factors, or it could shift over time and, and ruin the inner sleeve. So there's all sorts of things, like a sealed record isn't necessarily a mint record. I think this is very helpful. I, I would have loved to have had this back in the day. It just kind of gives a nice brief overview over just kind of collecting records talks about box sets, goes into Elvis and early rock and roll, and then uh, more rockabilly stuff. Then it gets into like mono, which is a great thing. Again, another, another chapter I wish I could have read back when I started uh, collecting. It would have helped so much more. And then we get into uh, folk, get into Motown. Great chapter on Motown. And then uh, obviously the Beatles are covered here. The Beatles on a budget, affordable albums by the Beatles. And these are primarily all capital records. His point is if you're just starting out and you want the Beatles on vinyl, here's a great easy way to pick up a lot of records for cheap. And then you get into the Stones, which is cool. He gives a nice little breakdown on their rivalry, how the Stones came about. You get a small little chapter on Psych, which uh, I think he could have gone a little bit more detail on. 
and then uh, we get a lovely chapter on David Bowie, and then we get into disco, which is interesting, and then we have uh, pub rock and punk rock, which pub rock was not a, a genre I was totally familiar with. And also included here, kind of tucked into this is later pressings, like 90s pressing, alternative music. You got a little thing on sub pop uh, seven inch records and you get uh, kind of a real condensed version of the 80s. And the focus is on the picture disc because that's kind of where picture discs really took off in popularity. And then we get into classical music, which, you know, admittedly, I sort of skipped over this. It wasn't all that fascinating. He does sort of talk about one of the major record labels. And then towards the very end, we have record collecting today. Here we have like, you know, independent record labels and really cool boutique pressings, that sort of a thing. And of course we have record store day. This is a fantastic resource for anyone who's just starting out in the hobby. This thing will jumpstart your knowledge bank of when you're out there in the wild collecting records. It will help you avoid some of the more common pitfalls, some of the things that I had issues with. It gives you a great understanding of like the last 50, 60, 70 years of American music. And it kind of gives you a lot of backstory and, and it gives you a nice little taste of maybe lesser known bands and, and just sort of, you know, the different types of formats that are out there. Like if you knew nothing about vinyl and vinyl collecting, you read this book, I would say afterwards, you'd be a pretty competent collector. You would know not necessarily where to shop, but what to look for when you're shopping and have a better understanding of, of the different types of pressings you might see, you know, original versus a repress versus a repress that was before digital. You kind of get a little taste of that, which can be very confusing if you're just starting out. And it's it's a fun little read, I, I gotta say. Dave Thompson, he, he definitely wrote this in a style I, I at times I found amusing at other times I found okay you're getting a little flowery with your words but overall it's entertaining it's not super dry it's not a textbook and it's it's a book on record collecting I mean that's that's fun in itself so I like that for this and it's full of a lot of pictures I like this resource having you know an eye of for you know what's out there what's sort of collectible has these pictures of some of the releases like oh okay if I ever see this, I'll know to pick this record up, right? I'm real visual. I, I remember more of the cover than I do like the band name, that sort of a thing. So I'll definitely, um, you know, keep my eyes open, that sort of thing. And I like how there's, you know, like a top 10 classic rock and roll albums that you should pick up. So I like that. It gives someone just starting out a good sort of jumping off point, a, a way of sort of, you know, figuring out what they want to collect, picking up some of the classics and then they can get more specific down the line. Right off the bat, um, there's, there's definitely some holes in the coverage. Most, the largest one being there's no real talk about hip hop. There's like a small, maybe a sentence in the 80s, but that's about it. And to me, that's one of the most interesting uh, genres to collect, especially right now. And that leads me to my next point. Once you finish this book, it becomes very clear, Dave Thompson, you know, where his preferred genres lie. He does a good job of sort of covering a lot of bases, but you can really tell that he is a product of growing up with uh, 60s, 70s rock. Part of the reason there's a hole in some of this is that I, I don't think that's the kind of music he likes. And then the main thing is I feel like it goes way too much into certain genres. For instance, classical music, disco, and folk. Yeah, there's Bob Dylan, there's Joan Baez, uh, Joni Mitchell, like, yeah, there's some heavy hitters in there, but I don't think it deserves as much of a chapter as he gave it, especially when you compare it to the, like, the two pages he gave to alternative rock. That, to me, is really collectible right now. It's very hot. A lot of new collectors want to buy that stuff from the 90s, and I, it, it feels like a big omission to really relegate that to just a chart and, 
like a paragraph or two. He could have talked a little bit more about collecting a day, uh, talked about buying online, what to be wary of, buying reissues versus original pressings, 180 gram vinyl, colored vinyl, all these sort of buzzwords, sort of uh, marketing terms, and sort of helping a young collector sort of navigate all that, just to be aware of stuff, like not all 180 gram vinyls created equal, not all colored vinyls created equal. I think he could have gone into vinyl record collecting clubs, because I think that's another good way to start a vinyl collection is by joining a club to kind of help you uh, navigate all this music out there. So overall, I enjoyed this book. I really recommend it for anyone out there who's just starting out or if you have a friend, a niece, a nephew, someone who is looking to get into record collecting, this is a fantastic resource to have. It's a fun read, it goes by quick, and it's full of tons of information. And with that, I give this book four pompadours out of five. All right, everybody, that will do it for this time around, but I wanna know what you have to say. Are you gonna check out this book? Have you read it already? Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey guys, thanks again for checking out this product review. Now, if you wanna see more, I put a playlist right there, as well as a link to a vintage Goldmine Magazine video I did a while back. So go ahead and click away. Bye.